All right, welcome back. Today we're going to explore some of the basics of World Blender. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is to get rid of this cube, or maybe not. We can just use this cube instead. So go to the modifier tab and create a new geometry node modifier and create a new geom geometry node graph. There we go. And split the view. Go to geometry node editor. Okay. We don't need the, the input geometry, so we just need to get rid of that. Okay, the first thing to do is to create a landscape. And we can create a new landscape. This is going to be a flat, empty landscape with nothing in it. Currently, the viewport is too close. The viewport limit is a little too close. So we need to increase this end distance a bit, like that. All right. So this is a one kilometer by one kilometer landscape. All right. Let me show you some other ways you can create a landscape. So let's create a monkey and let's make him a little bigger like that and create a new geometry node like so and use this object to landscape node. And this time we just we just need to connect the monkey into this node and connect this node to the output. And it will turn the monkey into a very nice monkey landscape. And we can increase the resolution or decrease. And we can increase the margin as well as configure the ground level. You can explore these later. For now, we will focus on the, the empty landscapes so that the people who use the free version of World Blender can follow along. So now we have the, the landscape. Let's go ahead and displace it a little. We have this very nice crack displacement and let's see. Reduce the height a bit. So you see the crack displacement kind of cut into the, the empty landscape. And you can increase the number of detail to all the way to six. There we go. You see, it's creating some very nice cracks within the landscape. So let's get rid of this and try something else. Let's say this. All right, for this displacement, you need a curve. So let's connect this like that. And let me create a curve, Bezier. Make it bigger like that. Let me go back to the outliner and I'm gonna drop the curve in there like so and go back to the asset browser all right so let's connect this curve like that and turn off the uh, use faces so that we only use the edges of the curve all right so now we can use this curve to create a mountain range and let's create increase the height and increase the spread okay so you see you can control the displacement using a curve you don't have this option in the free version. In the free version, you have this chip displacement and the noise displacement. So let's check out those two. This is the chip displacement. As you can see, it's like very sharp looking rocks. And let's increase the details to three. All right. And again, you also have uh, this, these parameters to control the textures. I mean, the displacement. Okay, and let's check out the noise. The noise is the simplest way to displace your landscape. So let's increase this details. All right, increase the height and reduce the height offset so that we can move the landscape down a, li a little. Okay. So you can actually chain together multiple displacement nodes for example, I can use this gradient displacement, like so, to create a ramp. And then I can drop in a noise displacement to break up the, the, the ramp, like so, and increase the details to, let's say, 5. And you have something very nice, right? And let's try a little steepness. OK, next let's try out this terrace node. The terrace node kind of uh, cut the landscape into layers like that. 
So you see, it looks like uh, a layered kind of rocks. But uh, if you look on this side, you can see the layering is kind of perfectly straight. So you can actually just drop in another noise note. But this time, you don't need a lot of details for the noise. And uh, there we go. You break up the terracing just like that. Super simple, right? So anyway, using World Blender Basics, you don't have this gradient node. So you can create some random looking landscape like this. Let me increase the size of the mountain as well as the height of the mountain and offset it down a bit. Like that. Okay. And let's just increase the details all the way to the maximum value. And let me reduce the terrace distance like that. And also maybe increase the steepness a little. That's a lot better. But really, we shouldn't be using just one terrace node. We can actually chain together multiple terrace nodes. For example, here I can terrace using a different uh, distance. Let's say 29. There we go. And I can offset the terracing a little bit and decrease this mass a little more. Okay, now we have a much more interesting terracing effect, right? And let me go back here and increase the resolution to 256 so, so that we have a lot more details. So you see, the terracing is super interesting. And right now it looks very much like a landscape already. But we're not there yet. There is one particular node that is extremely important for landscape, and that is the erosion node. So this is the... Um, let me go to the physics of World Blender Pro. And this is, this is the erosion node of World Blender Pro. And uh, let's add in the erosion node of World Blender Basics. So the erosion of World Blender Pro is a little more advanced. The erosion node of World Blender Basics only has a few different parameters to control the water and uh, the power of the water, while the erosion of the World Blender Pro version has a lot more parameters, like the rock breaking, the wear expansion, and stuff. So for this tutorial, I'm going to be using the erosion of the World Blender Pro, but I'm going to make it look like the World Blender Basics version by setting the wear expansion to zero, rock break to zero, and wind erosion to zero. Also the rest aeration to zero as well. Okay, now this erosion is similar to the version of World Blender Basics. So let me just drop this in here. And by default, the, the erosion node won't be running because it's already deactivated. This erosion node will take a long time to run, so be very careful when to turn it on. Now, before we turn on this erosion node, I want to add another node that is in the helper. It's the landscape to object node. This node will destroy a lot of data within the landscape and turn it into a regular object. Before, it's a landscape object, all right? And after this node, it's a regular object. So you can't use these uh, displacement nodes after this landscape to object node, all right? And in this node, we also have a uh, default material. So we're going to be using that material to visualize our landscape. All right, now let's activate the erosion node and wait a bit. There we go. Let me turn on the timing and see. Okay, it took three seconds to run on this 256 uh, landscape. And let's see. It seems like we need to configure the lighting. All right. Go to Shader Editor and go to World Settings. Here, I'm going to simply add a sky texture like that. And let's render. The light is a little too bright, so I'm going to reduce it a little bit. OK. As you can see, we start to have some erosion going on here, but the erosion is not enough. As you can see, we still have quite a bit of rocks, so we need to increase the power of the erosion node a bit. 
Now before you try to change any numbers in this, be sure to deactivate the erosion node in the viewport. Otherwise, every time you change a number, the erosion node will rerun, so you have to wait another 3 seconds. So let me deactivate this and decrease the rock hardness, increase the uh, erosive power, and uh, let's let's just leave everything else as default for now and let's see what's going on. There we go. As you can see, with higher erosive power and weaker rocks, we have a lot more erosion. And this time I think the erosion is a little too much because the dirt is all over the place. I want to see some more rocks, so I can either decrease the erosive power or increase the rock hardness. So in this case, I'll just increase the rock hardness and let's see. There we go. So you see, you can configure this erosion node to create many different types of landscapes. Okay, before we end this video, I want to try and increase the resolution for the landscape and see what this landscape looks like. So let me increase this to, let's say, 1024. Since the resolution of the landscape is a lot higher, the erosion node is going to take a lot longer to run. So in my case, it's going to take about 1 minute for a 1K landscape and about 5 minutes for a 2K landscape and uh, maybe around 20 minutes for a 4K landscape. And uh, let's check out the memory consumption of the World Blender. And it's using quite a bit of memory. So be sure to have enough memory before you try to increase the resolution of the landscape. Okay. And look at that, we have a very nice landscape. Let's check out how long it took for the erosion node to run. 46 seconds, which is a little bit faster than I expected. But yeah, that's good. So let's see what it looks like. We're currently using the uh, landscape to object of the uh, World Blender Basics. So let me try, I forgot to turn off the erosion node and now I have to wait 46 seconds for the entire node graph to rerun. It's a bit of a waste of time, so be careful when you edit your node graph after you erode the landscape, all right? Otherwise, you will end up waiting forever for every time you change something. Okay. Now let me turn on this activate in viewport, and I'm going to replace this node with the same node from the World Blender Pro this landscape to object node, all right? Okay, this is the landscape to object of the World Blender Basics, and this is the landscape to object from the World, Blend, World Blender Pro. These are basically the same except for the default material. This is the default material of the Pro version, which was created using the uh, material nodes that are only available in World Blender Pro. So anyway, let's put this on here. And again, we have to wait for the erosion to run. All right, it's complete. And let's see. As you can see, the World Blender Pro has a lot better default material. And uh, let's see. The default material was able to extract a lot more details from the landscape. But that's not too important because the default material is just to visualize your landscape. In the end, you're going to have to build your own custom material using the material notes. So the default material doesn't matter that much. So you see, if you want to, let's say, paint all of these details, you're going to take forever. And it's not going to look as good. And if you try to sculpt these rocks, well, good luck with that. It's next to impossible. Well, it's actually possible, but it's going to take a long, long time for just about the same result. Let's zoom out and count how many notes we use. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Just 7 notes and we ended up with a super nice, high detailed landscape. Just 7 notes. And all these 7 notes are available for free in World Blender Basics version. And a lot more notes in World Blender Pro. In the next video, I'm going to talk about the materials of World Blender. And uh, I'm going to demonstrate the process of creating a simple material for the landscape. Okay, I'll see you next time.